What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. Are you struggling to find fish offshore with your new fish finder? Well in this video, I'm going to explain how you can become a lot more efficient with your fish finder to find more bass away from the bank this year. Let's get into it. One of the most common problems I see among new fish finder users is they don't know when to use the different views on their fish finder, specifically the down imaging and the side imaging view. If you understand when to use each of these views, you're going to become a lot more efficient at finding fish and have a lot more success offshore. To explain how to properly apply each of these different sonar views, let's start by comparing it to a topic you might be a little bit more familiar with. That's fishing down the bank in a boat. Here's an aerial view of a typical bank you might fish on your home lake. From this bird's eye perspective, we can easily pick out some of the key points of interest down this bank that even a novice angler would try to fish. You might try to fish this point, this lay down log, or this boat dock. These are obvious visible targets, and if you spent any time studying bass fishing, you'll know that these types of targets are key places that bass will set up on and where you can catch fish. These aren't the only targets that hold bass though. There are other targets that are under the water out in the middle of the lake that you can't visually see. This point may extend out into the middle of the lake and then drop off into a creek channel, which will be a key place to hold fish. Or you may find some offshore cover, like a brush pile or a rock pile, further off the bank. The way you find these offshore pieces of cover that you can't see is by using a fish finder. And there's actually a specific view that's designed to help you find pieces of cover and structure away from the bank. And that's side imaging. Much like getting an aerial view of this bank to see what visible cover we can find, side imaging on your fish finder is designed to give you an aerial view of what's on the bottom of the lake. The way side imaging works is that it will scan to the right and to the left of your boat 60 to 100 feet so that you can see any available cover that's out in the middle of the lake that you can't visibly see with your eyes. There's one thing I want to clarify about side imaging that confuses a lot of anglers. When you set the range in your side imaging to let's say 100 feet, a lot of anglers assume that the side imaging is scanning 100 feet across the bottom of the lake to the right and to the left of the boat. However, you have to account for the fact that side imaging also captures the water column. The water column is the black space in the middle of the screen. The bottom of the lake is where the color starts on either the right or the left side. In this example here, you can see that there's 20 feet of black space on both sides of the center line and then 80 feet of the colored region. The 80 feet of the color region is the actual bottom of the lake that you're scanning, and then that black space is 20 feet of the water column. Therefore, even though you're setting your range to 100 feet in your side imaging, you're actually only scanning 80 feet of the bottom of the lake on both sides of the boat. You're not actually scanning a full 100 feet. This means you've set the range to 50 feet and you're in 20 feet of water, you're only scanning 30 feet on either side of your boat. If this concept's a little bit confusing, I've made a detailed video explaining how this works where I actually went into a parking lot and used some traffic cones and other things like that to explain how to interpret a side imaging image. So definitely check that video out. I'll also be making an updated version of that very soon if you guys are still a little bit confused on that concept. This is the main application of side imaging to identify those hidden pieces of structure and cover out in the middle of the lake. However, a lot of anglers try to use side imaging to find fish. This is like trying to sign a check with a paint roller. A paint roller is great for applying a lot of paint over a large area. However, a pen is a lot better tool for trying to sign your signature. In the same way, side imaging is a great tool for scanning a large amount of water quickly to identify key pieces of structure and cover that you should fish. However, bass are not that big, and even a really big bass might be no more than 24 inches long or 2 feet. Therefore, if you're scanning to the right and to the left of your boat 100 feet on each side, that means that the bass is only going to take up one one hundredth of the width of that screen. And it's going to be very, very difficult to identify a tiny fish on your screen compared to the vast amount of water that you're scanning on your side imaging. Now it is possible to identify bass using your side imaging, and I've made videos explaining how to do this in the past. They'll basically just show up as black grains of rice because you're actually looking at the shadows of those bass as they're sitting on the bottom of the lake. However, this is definitely not easy to do, and even though I've had thousands of hours of experience using my side imaging, I still struggle to identify individual fish on the side imaging consistently. Fortunately, our fish finders come equipped with a lot better tool for identifying bass, and that's down imaging. If side imaging is the paint roller, down imaging is the pen. 
With down imaging, you're scanning a lot smaller area. It's basically the water directly below the transducer on your boat. This means that the bass are going to be a lot easier to detect because relative to the area that you're scanning, the bass are going to be pretty big. This allows us to scan over an area with our down imaging and clearly identify individual fish. In this example, you can see a brush pile, and just to the right, you see three or four small dots. These are actually bass, and while these dots are pretty small, you can still see them very clearly, and you can also see some target separation where the dots are separated by black space. This is one of the key indicators that we're actually looking at bass, and I've explained how to identify bass on your down imaging in another video. I'll link it up above, and I have a lot of other videos linked down below if you want more basic fish finder instruction. Because down imaging is designed to be good at identifying individual fish, there's no need to use side imaging to actually find bass. Instead, it's better to use both of these views in combination to quickly identify areas that are holding fish. Let me show you my process for how I do this. I'll start by scanning down a bank with my side imaging to identify any pieces of structure or cover that I can find. In this example, you can see a really nice rocky spot to the left of my boat. Once I've identified a key piece of structure or cover on my side imaging, I'll cursor over using the thumb pad on my fish finder and then drop a waypoint directly on that object. This is a really cool feature on any fish finder and it allows you to drop a waypoint to the right or to the left of your boat as long as it shows up on the screen here. Once I've dropped my waypoint, I'm going to use the chart view on my fish finder to drive back around that area and try to line up so that my boat goes directly over the top of that waypoint. I will then regraph the exact spot that I marked in my side imaging, in this case, that offshore rock pile. While I'm doing this, I'm actually going to change the view from side imaging to down imaging. This will allow me to get a more detailed view of that offshore area to see if there are any fish present. In this case, when I regraphed over that area with down imaging, you can clearly see five or six dots, as well as a school of bait fish. You weren't able to see this on the side imaging very well. However, by using down imaging, I was able to clearly see that there were fish on this area. I was then able to cast a bait down there and catch a really good fish. This is the process I use over and over again when I'm fishing offshore. I'll first graph an area side imaging, identify that key point of interest, regraph it with down imaging, and if I see fish or bait fish activity, I will fish that area. Really quick, I want to let you guys know about some upcoming seminars that are available on our website fishthemoment.com. Just head to our website and then go to the virtual seminars page. The first seminar is focused on how weather affects bass. If you've ever struggled to adapt to changing weather or lake conditions, this is the seminar for you. Whether it's a post front day, a drop in water level, or any other factor that could screw up the fishing, this seminar will explain how to make the proper adjustments to your baits and areas to put more fish in the boat. The second seminar is our advanced spring jig fishing seminar. Randy and I will be sharing our best jig fishing secrets for the pre-spawn, spawn, and post-spawn. We'll include lure customizations, the best areas to fish jigs, and some tournament patterns that you can use to catch some really big fish on jigs in the spring. Check out both these seminars over at fishthemoment.com. To bring this concept full circle, let's go back to that aerial view that I showed you of that bank with the shallow cover and the offshore cover. Again, in this aerial view, you can easily see the visible targets that are on the bank. However, you won't be able to see those underwater targets unless you use the side imaging. This means that side imaging is basically giving you a bird's eye view of what's under the water. If we then zoom into the boat and take a look at what the lake will look like when you're actually fishing from your boat, you can see a lot more detail when you're up close. You'll be able to identify different stumps or logs or bushes that you may want to fish. In this case, you can make pinpoint accurate casts to those shallow targets and catch a lot of fish. In the same way, down imaging gives you a lot more detailed view of that bird's eye perspective you got from side imaging. Every time I regraph an area with down imaging, I'm getting all of that detail, seeing every individual limb or stump or fish that's in the area. To tie this all together, side imaging is basically like giving yourself a bird's eye view of offshore areas so you can identify all the objects and structure that's out in the middle of the lake. It's similar to scanning an entire pocket or cove to look for key points of interest like the boat dock or the laydowns. Down imaging on the other hand gives you a very detailed view of a specific point in the lake. You can scan a specific target like a brush pile and see all the details of that brush as well as whether there's fish or bait fish around that object. 
you won't be able to get the perspective of all the different targets in the area, but you'll be able to really focus in on one spot. This is similar to when you're working down a stretch of bank on your trolling motor. You're able to see all the small objects and details of the bank, but you might not be able to see everything that's going on around you because you're focused on the area directly in front of your boat where you're making your cast. Going further, the way that you identify fish on shallow pieces of cover is by actually fishing those objects with a bait. You use a spinner bait or a jig and cast it around every visible target you can see. If you get bit, there's a fish there. If you don't get bit, there may not be. However, when you're offshore, you don't actually have to cast your bait on every single spot to know if there's fish in the area. Instead, you can use your down imaging to identify fish before you ever make a cast. This makes offshore fishing more efficient in terms of knowing that you're putting your bait in front of fish on almost every single cast. However, finding offshore pieces of structure and cover they're holding bass is a time-consuming process. You have to spend a lot of time idling around with your fish finder to first identify the pieces of cover that you can't see because they're in the middle of the lake. Then you have to regraph them with your down imaging to see if there are fish on those objects. Again, when you're fishing up shallow, you can see all of the objects in an area, so you don't have to waste time on that first step of locating the pieces of structure or cover. However, when you're fishing down the bank, you don't know which piece of cover is going to hold a fish, so you have to fish everything, making a ton of casts throughout the day and trying every single piece of cover that you can see on the bank. Therefore, both styles of fishing require a lot of time and effort to find fish. When you're fishing on shallow visible targets, the way you find the fish is by making as many casts as possible throughout the day on as many targets as possible. When you're fishing offshore, that means graphing in the middle of the lake for as long as it takes to find a piece of cover with fish positioned close to it. Sometimes this can take an hour, sometimes it can take four hours. And usually when I go to the lake to fish offshore, I spend at least four hours of my eight hour fishing day just driving the boat around the middle of the lake graphing and about four hours fishing. On the other hand, if I go fish up shallow, I'm fishing the entire day, making a thousand casts a day. However, I have no idea if the spots I'm fishing are holding fish until I get bit. It's just a difference in style, and if you prefer to know exactly what you're fishing before you fish it, then offshore fishing can be really effective because you can identify the exact spots that are holding fish and have confidence that every single time you cast your bait, you're putting it around a fish. However, if you go to the lake to fish and actually make a bunch of casts, then maybe sticking to the shallow water patterns and targeting visible pieces of cover will be more enjoyable for you and help you have a better time fishing. Either way, they're both viable techniques and they both require a different skill set, so pick the one that you feel like is going to be the most enjoyable for you and get out to the lake and start fishing. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and learned something about how to better utilize your fish finders to find offshore pieces of cover and structure. If you enjoyed the video, I would really appreciate if you left a like on the video. It helps us with the YouTube algorithm and gets this video out to more people. Also consider subscribing to the Fish the Moment YouTube channel if you want to watch more videos like this one. We post every Thursday at 7 a.m. Central Standard Time, so make sure you check back so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks again for checking out this video, and we'll see you on the next one.